This week, one of the coldest air masses of the season is plunging much of the country into the deep freezer. Yes, folks, the notorious polar vortex is back in our vocabularies. But what exactly is this cold air package and why does it decide to take such extended vacations down south? Meteorologist Dylan Kakuda joins us to really break this down. Dylan, what exactly is the polar vortex? Well, we have to look upward into the sky and northward up near the North Pole. That's where we have a circulation that kind of locks up the coldest air of the season. All that air is spinning around and occasionally it does make some trips southward. Okay, think about this folks like a moat really holding in and containing some of that really cold air and folks the polar vortex uh, is around all year round up at the North Pole, but it's strongest at the winter uh, during the winter season. And then why Dylan does it decide to spill south every so often creating these long range cold snaps. Well, typically those winds are quite strong around this polar vortex, keeping all that cold air trapped. But sometimes we start to see those winds back off a little bit. That makes it a little bit weaker. And then that jet stream, that jet stream spells trouble sometimes when it begins to form some wavy patterns. And that will almost like punch the cold air up in the Arctic. And the only way that cold air can escape is going down south. And this can be helped out by some blocking patterns when we have those highs over Alaska and Greenland, for example. Yeah, folks, we actually have all of these recipe ingredients in place this week across the country, directing that coldest Arctic air southward and creating those persistent cold signals, especially for parts of the eastern half of the country. Normally that polar vortex, that moat is smooth and strong, but not right now. And then what happens, not only uh, a lobe of this polar vortex sinks south, and it's not just the quality of this cold air, it's the quantity. Why does the polar vortex tend to really stick around on these extended vacations? Well, we start to see that cold air, it's not just locked up aloft, but we start to see that cold air making its way down to the surface. So, and when that happens, it's really hard for other air masses to fight back and moderate that. And then you see these prolonged periods of cold air rushing across the region and means that you definitely need to throw on those extra layers of winter clothing. Mm -hmm. So folks, as that lobe of Arctic air not only sinks south in latitude, it's also sinking south when it comes to the layers uh, up and down of the atmosphere. And as it's lodged at a lower level of the atmosphere, it is not only promoting long fledged cold, it can also promote active weather. I want to talk about this for a minute. When we're talking in terms of the polar vortex, this has not been an easy gentle slide into winter for much of the country with lots of active weather, Dylan. How can the polar vortex actually well, promote more of all of this white stuff? Well, we know that storm systems run on fuel of temperature gradients when we have cold air right beside warm air and when a polar vortex starts to branch off further south for a little bit of a vacation trip that cold air clashes with that warmth and moisture from that south and when that happens you can get some of these stronger storm systems spinning up across the region so it means you don't get only the cold air you also get quite a bit of precipitation as well sometimes when all the ingredients come together okay so not only uh, cold promoting more storm systems for some of the regular suspect regions but a polar vortex is also responsible sometimes for plunging cold and active weather as far south as places like florida and mexico and creating really monster storm systems across parts of the central plains of the u.s we will certainly watch the active weather fallout and the deep freezer temperatures this upcoming week ahead.